First thing I want to tell you today is that killing cancer cells is actually extremely easy. In the laboratory, we can blast them with radiation or drown them in chemotherapy drugs and very efficiently kill them. But the problem comes when trying to kill cancer cells in a patient who also has a large number of healthy cells that ultimately need to survive the treatment. And that's the problem that underlies a lot of traditional cancer therapies, is that they're unable to sufficiently distinguish between healthy cells and cancer cells with negative impacts for the patient. So the main focus of my research has been in identifying distinguishing characteristics between healthy cells and cancer cells that we can hopefully exploit in designing more specific and targeted therapies for cancer. And what I've focused on is differences in how healthy cells and cancer cells tolerate damage in their DNA. So here I've illustrated the chromosome of a healthy cell. And as this healthy cell is growing and dividing, it will copy its chromosome. And at some low level, it will incorporate errors or DNA damage. In contrast, a cancer cell, which divides many more times and copies its chromosome many more times, will incorporate many more errors and have a much higher level of DNA damage. And what our research in yeast has revealed is that in cells like cancer cells that have elevated levels of DNA damage, they actually become addicted to a group of pathways known as DNA damage tolerance pathways. And now before I go any further, yes, I did say yeast. We are doing this research in yeast, which you recognize from beer brewing or bread baking. But we are using them in this uh, project for a different reason. And there are actually three. The first is that yeast and humans actually tolerate DNA damage in a remarkably similar way. But second, yeast also grow much faster than humans, and they're much more easily and ethically manipulated in the lab than humans are. <laughs> But what we found is that in cells, like cancer cells, that have elevated levels of DNA damage, if you take away these DNA damage tolerance pathways to which they are addicted, they are actually unable to survive. They are specifically killed. And more importantly, if you take away these same pathways from healthy cells, it has no measurable impact on their viability. So what we think is that these DNA damage tolerance pathways, collectively, may serve as the Achilles heel to cancer we've been looking for, and that we may be able to specifically target or inhibit them in therapies that would specifically kill cancer cells while having a minimal impact on the healthy cell population. Thank you.